Today, we explore some free and simple ways to optimize your computer for 3D printing. Just a quick video today on setting up your computer to be a little bit more efficient when it comes to 3D printing. From time to time, I was getting questions in the comments about how to set up thumbnails in particular. Unfortunately, I'm only on Windows, so if you're on Mac or Linux and you have any tips that you can share, please do so below in the comments. The first thing we're gonna talk about in Windows is this folder here, 3D Objects. It's automatically created by Windows and we always have quick access to it. And I imagine people that do zero 3D printing think this is completely useless. But as we can see, I'm using it, filling it with STLs that I've either paid for or print regularly, like a 20mm calibration cube, a low poly fox, and of course, the humble 3D Benchy. Maybe you're already using another folder and you want to make it convenient, and for that we have this quick access panel. And perhaps you have another folder that you'd like to add to it, like I have with my folders here. If you do want easy access to another folder that you're using for 3D files, Simply navigate to this folder, right click on quick access, and then select pin current folder to quick access. This of course will make it appear on the bottom of the list and we can click and drag to change the order. Of course, if you wanna remove it, right click and select unpin from quick access. You might like to have folders for SDLs and I imagine some people would like to have folders for G code that they've already sliced. If you use a list format like you're seeing here, this next part probably won't matter for you but if you're using large or extra large icons, then it's quite hard to tell these STL files apart. Fortunately, we can do better by installing a plugin to convert this generic thumbnail image to useful thumbnails that show the 3D geometry. There's a few options for this, but the one we're gonna use for this video is by Papa's Best, and there's several reasons for it. Firstly, it's quite fast, it's completely free, no advertising, no data collection, no cloud connections, it's got wide compatibility, and if we like, we can even customize the color scheme. To install it, we're gonna scroll up and for most people, it's going to be 64-bit setup. This will download a file which we can double click to start the installation. We have a one-click install and then we click finish. And like we commonly see, we need to restart to complete the installation. After rebooting, we're back in the same folder. As we can see, some of the thumbnails have been generated but some other ones haven't. So to fix this, we're going to clear the Windows thumbnail cache. From the start menu, we're gonna run disk cleanup and then select the drive where your STLs are stored. Then we need to scroll down to the bottom of the list and make sure we tick thumbnails. What you have ticked above this is completely up to you. We'll click the confirmations and assuming you don't have too much else you're deleting, this whole process should only take a few seconds. If like me, you don't see the change straight away, right click and select refresh. This will prompt the plugin to spring into action and you can see it's going through each of these files and folders, generating a very useful thumbnail image one at a time. The first time you open any folder with STLs in it, this same process will occur. And once they're made, we can switch to very large icons and they simply scale up instead of us having to wait for it to happen once more. Now that we can easily see what these files are, let's change the behavior that happens when we double click them. When you install pretty much any slicer, it's gonna override defaults and make it so STLs open straight from the folder into the slicer. But for me, this is a little bit too slow. Your slicer is a great location for an STL to end up, but I prefer to drag them in when I'm ready to slice, and I don't want the slicer to open when I quickly want to preview a file. One good option is the inbuilt Windows 3D Viewer. It opens pretty quickly, and we immediately have a number of ways with single clicks where you can preview the file. We can rotate the light source as well as changing the color. 3D Viewer is particularly good on the viewing side. For instance, we can come to quick animations, put the object on a turntable and then set our speed. This is quite attractive and would be pretty good for some sort of point of sale display. If we switch tabs up the top, we can change a lot more about the appearance, turning on and off various elements to experiment with the file. However, a lot of these are a mystery to me and ticking them doesn't really seem to achieve anything. Switching to the final tab gives us yet more camera options. Despite having some technical data, one thing missing here is the actual size of the STL. Probably one of the key things we want to know when we're preparing a file for slicing and printing. So with that in mind, let's explore an alternative and we're back with Papa's Best, this time the STL Viewer. The key feature here is a lack of bloat and that means it's really fast. 
And like last time, it's completely free without advertising, data collection, etc. Once again to install, we're going to come up and click the version we want, for me 64-bit setup. Like before we have a one-click install. And after we click finish, we'll once again be prompted to restart our computer. I've rebooted and you can see by this icon in the corner that my slicer is still trying to open the STL. To fix that, I can right click on the file, come to open with, and then come down to choose another app. This works for switching to any software that you want to use. I'm going to select Papa's Best STL Viewer, tick Always Use This App to Open STL Files and then click OK. As promised, it was quick to open and we can click and drag the mouse to orbit the camera and use the mouse wheel for zooming in and out. The minimal interface still has some important information, such as the software the STL was created with, whether it's binary or ASCII, and the overall size of the model. We have color defaults, but we can override them by ticking material and then clicking to select a color of our choice. One thing that's not obvious is that we can use the left and right hand keys on the keyboard to navigate between all the STLs in that folder. And as you can see, even though these are quite detailed models, they load almost instantly. Up in the view menu, we can find ways to customize. For instance, if we want to see outlines of wireframe, we can toggle that there. And we can also change our units to Imperial from metric. There's also an option to change the default material color and background color. It should be noted that after we change the default material or background, this will change the default with how the thumbnails are displayed as well. To get them to update, we once again want to clear the thumbnail cache in Windows. After we've done that and we refresh the folder, we'll see that all of our thumbnails are generated again, this time with the new customized color. I didn't really encounter any problems, but just in case you do, there is a troubleshooting section at the bottom of the web page. And it should be noted that some STLs will have a bug with black backgrounds, but apparently that's a Windows bug and beyond the scope of the software. Overall, I'm really happy with this combination of software. The thumbnails make it really quick and easy to navigate STLs, and I can double click to very quickly inspect them prior to printing. Probably the only caveat here is that this software doesn't support the more and more popular 3MF format. So thank you to Chris, the author of the software, for making it free and very usable. Just a quick one to hopefully help out those new to 3D printing. And if you are more experienced, please try and get down in the comments and give some suggestions too. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy efficient 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.